Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Anyone know what the Fields Medal is? It's a really big deal. It's like the Nobel Prize for math, except they only give it out once every four years. In 2022, Jun Ha won the Fields Medal, and naturally, the interviewers were curious about his background. They asked him, what kind of mathematics did you like best in school and at the university? Do you have a favorite math problem from back then? He replies, I may be atypical among professional mathematicians in that I was neither very good nor intensely interested in mathematics in school and at the university. I do, however, have a few early experiences that may now be characterized as mathematical. For example, I was playing The 11th Hour in Middle School, a 90s video game in a horror setting, and there was the following chess puzzle. We have 10 squares arranged in the following shape. We have two white knights, and we have two black knights. The challenge is to swap the positions of the black and the white knights. You should end up that the two black knights are in the spots where the two white knights are, and vice versa, the two white knights are in the positions where the black knights are. But there are rules to this game. So the knights themselves move like in a regular chess game. So if you have a knight, it's going to move two up and one over, or it will move two over and one up. This will be an L shape. So if we have a knight in this grid, these are the different possible places that the knight could move to. So each knight is moving just like it would in a regular game of chess. And just like a regular game of chess, each square can only have one piece. So you can't move two knights to occupy the same square. This would not be allowed. But there is one difference to a regular game of chess. Unlike chess, you do not have to alternate moves between white and black. So let's say you take the black knight and you move it up here. In a regular game of chess, you would have to alternate to a white knight, but in this puzzle, you are allowed to move that same piece again, or another black knight. So you could move this black knight to another position, and that would be a perfectly legal move. So the puzzle is, how do you swap the positions of the white and black knights? Anyone who's determined could solve this problem. But I will warn, it's not an easy puzzle to solve just by guess and check. So what happened when he tried to solve it? After hundreds of ad hoc attempts, spending all my energy for more than a week on this puzzle, I almost gave up. Then I realized the L-shaped move of the knights and the physical appearance of the irregular chessboard are irrelevant. Only the relations between the squares matter. So let's try to transform the problem into what he's talking about. I was completely blown away by this ingenious approach to solve the puzzle. So let's work through it step by step. Let's first remove the knights from the squares and let's number this top square as one. Where can a knight go from this square? There's only one spot that the knight can go and we'll label this as square two. From here, the knight could go back to square one, or if it proceeds to a new square, it can only go to one square, which we will label square three. There's only one new square a knight could go from here, and we will label that as square four. From here, let's say the knight goes to the bottom row, and we'll call this square five. The knight can't proceed to any new squares from here, it could only go back to square four. From square four, there is one other spot we could go to, and this we will call square number six. A new square that you could go to from here, we will call as square seven. Then we could proceed to a new square, which we will label as eight. We can finally go down here, which we will call square nine. And then we complete the tour of all of these squares and call this as square 10. From square 10, you can only go back to square nine. So now let's connect squares where a knight could legally travel between. So knight could go from one to two, two to three, then to four. From four, if the knight goes to five, the knight will hit a dead end and then has to go back to four. But the knight could then go to six and then seven, eight, nine, and finally it'll be a dead end at 10. So instead of analyzing the problem in terms of squares and knights, let's look at this as a graph.
we can actually unwrap the graph so that we have it in an easier to understand shape. So let's go ahead and unwrap this graph. Let's move the node one, then we will put two next to it, and then three next to it, and then four next to it. From here, we have one branch that goes off to five. We have another branch that goes off to six, and then seven, and then eight, and nine, and 10. So now let's place knights on this new graph. In the original puzzle, the knights were placed with a white knight on square one, a white knight on square two, a black knight on square three, and a black knight on square five. So on the new graph, let's place white knights on nodes one and two, and black knights on nodes three and five. Looking at this new graph, it should be quite clear how to swap the positions of the knights. The key to the whole puzzle will be the node number five. This will be a place that you can park a knight and all of the other knights can pass by it in this L shape. So let's go ahead and use this strategy. Let's first take the two white knights and the black knight on one, two, and three and move them out of the way. So let's go three to four, then the black knight will go four to six, then it'll move to seven and to eight. This will clear some room for the two white knights. Then we'll move the white knights to the spots of seven and six. So we'll move this white knight out of the way and we'll do the same thing for the other white knight. This will clear the path for the black knight parked at five. So it can proceed without any hindrance all the way to node number one. Now we need to move this black knight into node number two. So we need these white knights out of the way. So we'll get the white knights out of the way and we need to park the black knight into node number five. So we've cleared the way and now this black knight can go into node number five. It'll be out of the way. So now the white knights can proceed down and then we will clear a path for the black knight. So we move this white knight to node number six and we have a clear path for the black knight to go to node number two. We'll just proceed and go ahead and do that. And now the white knights can come back up. So this white knight will be positioned at node three and this white knight will get parked at node number five. And voila, in 40 moves, we have swapped the positions of the knights. This would have been tremendously complicated to do in the original puzzle, but it was a cinch with this translation of the problem into a new graph. What a genius and amazing puzzle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.